Data Bank, commence recording. This is General Straker of the World Security Service. In this briefing, I'll be discussing the role and function of the Shadow Moon Base, the heart of Shadow's orbital defense perimeter. Moon Base was Shadow's sole lunar installation. It was constructed to act as an advanced monitoring and defense outpost, and the staging base for the Shadow Interceptor Squadron. The base was 230 feet in length, 195 feet wide, and was located in the eastern half of the Sea of Tranquility. The complex comprised a central structure and a series of walkways connected to five modules on the perimeter of the base. The reception sphere was the point of entry for all personnel arriving from Earth. A lunar module flight was scheduled approximately every 24 hours although this varied depending on the operational alert status on the base. After landing clearance was given, the lunar module descended onto the blast-proof pad above the reception sphere, where a gantry clamped it in place. The base usually supported a crew of 25, but could be operated with a crew of 10 if the need arose. When the lunar module had been refueled and boarding completed, the gantry was retracted and the shuttlecraft blasted off on the return journey to Earth. The module entered the Earth's upper atmosphere and proceeded to rendezvous with the lunar carrier, a larger parent craft, which was capable of atmospheric flight. The carrier descended to its home airfield and used vectored thrust jets to touch down vertically, completing the module's journey from moon base in just under a day. The reactor sphere was one of the most critical areas on Moon Base. Its primary purpose was to generate power for the lunar complex and regulate fuel supplies for the interceptors and lunar craft. The base's artificial gravity system was also controlled from the reactor sphere, allowing the majority of Moon Base to experience Earth-like gravity 24 hours a day. The command sphere was the nerve center of Moon Base and the personnel in the command sphere were responsible for a variety of vital duties. Alert drills were carried out at regular intervals to ensure all personnel were ready to respond at a moment's notice. A communications link with the Space Intruder Detector, or SID, was monitored around the clock, and any confirmed sightings could be plotted as soon as they were received. The moon base commander also acted as flight coordinator for the interceptor squadron and kept a detailed log of the interceptor response times. The leisure sphere was home to the relaxation area, cafeteria, and interceptor standby lounge. A wide variety of dishes from many different countries were available at the cafeteria's food dispenser unit and helped the lunar personnel feel at home. The interceptor pilots often spent a great deal of time in the leisure sphere, between operational alerts, so it was furnished with modern comforts and means of entertainment. The sleep sphere was the main rest area on Moon Base, where the majority of the sleeping accommodations were located. Each area in the sleep sphere had an adjustable day and night cycle, so the lighting conditions mimicked those on Earth. This allowed the personnel to adjust to a sleep pattern on the moon. The central section of moon base, which was often dubbed Central Park, or main module, was home to facilities and amenities such as the gymnasium and the medical bay. Central Park also afforded access to the hangar bay and armory. The vehicle hangar was a partially subterranean multi-level storage bay for the shadow moon mobiles and lunar tanks. The moon mobiles were agile survey craft designed for rapid transport over the lunar surface. They were equipped with a single Zimmerman M1 autocannon for defense and demolition work. Conversely, the lunar tanks were heavily armed with four Bishop-type surface-to-space projectile launchers. These impressive vehicles functioned as a lunar ground defense force, safeguarding moon base from aerial attack. This concludes the briefing. Unknown to the shadow operatives at the time, 
Moonbase would remain the most technologically advanced outpost on the lunar surface until the completion of Moonbase Alpha. In fact, when Shadow was disbanded at the end of the war, Moonbase became an auxiliary research post for the science division on Alpha. There is something poetic in an instrument of war being transformed into an instrument of peace. It's a legacy that won't soon be forgotten. Databank. Cease recording.